welcome to One Man's Tracks, the second-hand music channel. I've been having such a wonderful time discovering, learning about, and listening to the evolution of singer-songwriter, producer, storyteller, and wild creature Nico Case. She's also, as it turns out, an honorary Canadian thanks to her connections with the new pornographers and just Vancouver in general. She was, however, born in Virginia in 1970. To teenage parents, she experienced a pretty tumultuous and neglectful childhood, moving around a lot, eventually just leaving home entirely at just age 15. She'd find a home, a community in the Washington punk scene where she would join several bands as a drummer and kind of come into her own before deciding she wanted to go study at the Emily Carr University of Art and Design up in Vancouver in the mid-90s. Her few years there were formative and productive, joining the groups Cub and Mao, and with Mao they'd release an EP and sign to an indie label Mint Records to record their punk rock debut, The Unforgiving Sounds of Mao, in 1996. The following year, she'd drop out, and while she was in the process of being deported, she recorded a few tracks that would end up eventually on that new pornographer's debut album, and the success of that record would be what would lead to the continued collaboration of her and that group, and the adoption of her by her Canadian neighbors. Upon her return to the States, she'd release her solo debut country record called The Virginian, which she'd record alongside a rotating cast of musicians she'd entitle Her Boyfriends, which included a pair of those new pornographers. Following that, the new millennium would see the release of her second country album, Furnace Room Lullabies, which would definitely start to hint at that inevitable shift, that evolution towards alternative indie. It's a somewhat indescribable sound that Nico has captured and honestly probably almost moved on from at this point in time, but it really starts to come up there and becomes even more evident on her departure from that, her boyfriend's labeling on that 2002 follow-up to that album, Blacklisted. The enchanting twangless narratives that she weaves over creative compositions with orchestral ambiance are some of the elements that lend that project its uncertain and unconventional alternative country categorization. Her continuously morphing style combined with her impeccable, powerful yet vulnerable, frank yet poetic, fresh but familiar vocalizations imbue each consecutive Nico Case release with this unique, connective, and captivating musical force. Following the release of a pair of live albums in 03 and 04, Nico would return to the studio once again with Daryl Neudorf to carve out a collaborative, creative space to record her following record with a bunch of familiar faces like guitarist Paul Rigby and bandmates John Rauhaus and Tom V. Ray, as well as the rhythm section for Calixico joining in. The Sadies wrote a couple of songs with her. She got a backup vocalist Kelly Hogan and Rachel Flotart joined in, as well as Giant Sands frontman Hal Gelb is a part of a number of these songs as well. They also brought in a couple of fresh faces like Canadian legend Garth Hudson plays keyboard on a couple of these tracks, and wow, he's a fantastic addition, as well as I'm sure a couple of others that I just don't have the mind to remember right now. And if there is anyone I did forget, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a little desperate at this point to start getting into this album and gushing over it. It's Nico Case's fourth solo LP, released on March 7th of 2006 through Anti Records. Here's Fox Confessor Brings the Flood. It's another gorgeous installment in her catalog that, through its stories, invites the listener to follow along, observe, and experience some dark swells of emotion that were confronted and guided by down this winding path we all walk. These unpretentious poetic proverbs that are accompanied by this wealth of indie folk Americana instrumentation and are just 
guided by the steadfast vocal prowess that Nico Case has, creates these timeless tales and makes for an incredibly rousing record. The seamless tempo shifts and the dreamlike story arcs all increase these tracks' depth and my intrigue in them. The immaculate sing-along, harmonic hooks and choruses, the clashing of worlds, and the blending of genres. It's high time we just take a trip and embark on this record's soul-stirring journey. That starts out with the classist comparison on the unforgettable opener, Margaret versus Pauline. This dichotomous tale can be a bit depressing, sure, but the delivery has such an elegance with a hint of whimsy to it, this sort of partially detached grace that carries me along with its wonderfully enabling accompaniment. It's just a gorgeous introduction that goes beyond setting the tone, and it sets me up in a comfortable state of observation to be my very own fox confessor. It's also an excellent lead into another tangled mess of emotions titled Star Witness. How can one song be so devastating but also so free? It's tremendous. The heavenly harmonies that punctuate the overwhelming choruses, the ever evocative lyrical imagery, and just the rock-solid performance behind it, you'll most certainly be left wanting more. And that's a feeling I continue to get across this track list, and once again in particular with the infectious echoed choruses of the all-too-short-lived follow-up, Hold On, Hold On. It emphasizes her country roots with the Sadies playing a large role in this one. It's a solemn, semi-autobiographical song that seems to be about not feeling worthy of being loved and the lies that we tell ourselves in order to kind of numb that pain. It's told with this yearning beauty that imbues it with an enduring sentiment. Next is A Widow's Toast, a stripped-down, droning, poetic piece that seems to be about the intangible nature of time, emotions, and how hopeless it can be to try to capture a moment. It's got this melancholic, ghostly air to it that creates this sort of open courtyard of reflection and actually does seem to leave us with hope for better times ahead, as fleeting as those times may be. Some solace is found in a brave friend's search for a pure love who doesn't care if he has to wait forever, he's holding out for that teenage feeling. It's a celebratory song that's somewhat bittersweet, it ruminates over past loves, and then decides that it's time to just seal up your heart and not settle for anything less than a nostalgia nostalgic flood of youthful bliss. Now the title track is a slippery one. It's tough to kind of nail down, but does have some great lyrical gems in it, like with the climax of this one. It's not for you to know, but for you to weep and wonder when the death of your civilization precedes you. Oh, this song just does so well to exemplify a feeling of disconnection with nature and a longing to strive for something greater than ourselves. Going through her music, I've learned that Nico has a fondness for covering old classic songs and tends to incorporate one or two into her albums, and in this case she's rewritten an old hymn called John the Baptist and turned it into her very own alternative country waltz called John Saw That Number. It's full of all sorts of clever biblical references, and just once again sees her adding to the perennial nature of this record with a super fun, bulky, foot-tapping myth. We then take an ominous descent into madness on the track Dirty Knife. It's a story about going crazy, locking the doors, burning your furniture for heat, and then fighting off these fake wolves. It patiently builds and brings in these bowed instruments, I think a bass and a cello that 
really add a lot of gravity to it and pull me right into this character's manic spiral. We then sway into the lion's jaws next, and it's actually pleasant enough. It's bluesier, but honestly, probably the most forgettable and understated on the album. It does say at the end of it, momentum for the sake of momentum, so perhaps it is purely just a moment of reflection to get some separation from that madness we just experienced. Luckily, it's really well placed in the track list, and the following Maybe Sparrow absolutely soars. It may be my favorite song here. It's an exquisite expression of love. Nico's heartfelt repetition of those final lines cut me right to the core, and I almost cry every time I hear this song. It's beautiful. Heading down the final stretch now, we get another short reflection that's entitled At Last before it's all brought home with many allusions to her home state of Washington on the track The Needle Has Landed. It sees her struggling to move on due to connections and memories she has with places that she can't get away from. It kind of leaves this whole modern fairy tale with an uncertain and up in the air ending. Box Confessor Brings the Flood is a vehicle that is guided by the whims of Nico Case's imagination, driven on the roads of her past and fueled by the regret, longing, and hope for a brighter future. The elements of cynicism and loneliness are never over dramatic or unrealistic and they do so well to highlight these moments of angelic surrender that we are honored with across this album. It's gorgeous, it keeps growing on me and it will remain a cherished piece of my collection. Her way with words, her tantalizing melodies and awe-inspiring performances have enveloped me in Nico Case's wild spirit. Since this, she's released three more full-length projects. In 2009, she released Middle Cyclone. Then she released The Worst Things Get, The Harder I Fight, The Harder I Fight, The More I Love You in 2013. And in 2018, she put out Hell On. I also just recently found out that she put out a sort of retrospective career overlooking album where she compiled a bunch of songs from across her discography into one album with an extra track that she's put together on there just this year and so there's really no better time for me to dive in and discover her history and go through her catalog. I've been really enjoying listening to those and I'm looking forward to checking out all those other bands that she's collaborated with over the years. Please leave me suggestions as to which albums to check out, some other stuff that she's worked on that I might not have heard of, or just tell me about your favorite song or favorite Nico Case album. I'd love to hear it. If you're looking for more stuff after that, I've got some more awe-inspiring singer-songwriters here. Fiona Apple, Tori Amos, a ton of other if you subscribe and like it. They're all coming at you because I just can't seem to get enough. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Maybe Sparrow. La di da di da di da.